Hives. All right, everybody. Hey, thanks for joining me. Um, sorry, this was a little bit late. We had a, a few technical difficulties and getting going, um, but we appreciate you joining us, and uh, we're really excited to be showing you um, some of the uh, drawing tools with Creative Studio, and so hopefully we we can uh, you'll learn a few things here as we go along. Um, so if you're primarily drawing with Creative Studio, um, one thing that you'd want to do is make sure that you have your draw line, your draw arc, your draw pattern, and draw freehand all um, right there available. The default setup has all four of these um, drawing tools right there, and then it's even got draw text there, um, which is another another method of drawing. Um, but your primary four that you're going to be using are the line, the arc, the pattern, and the freehand. And really, you're mostly going to use the first, the first two, the line and the arc. So, if you decide you want to draw something and you're not really sure. How to draw it? You can, uh, of course, you can freehand some stuff together, and um, you know, try to make like a clover leaf or something. And obviously, it may not look that good if you don't have something to follow over. Um, but we have the ability that you can import an image and. Well, let's just let's just use that. Okay, if I want to make a pattern that has similar to this piecing, uh, I can do that. So I'm going to draw arc, and your first click establishes the first point of the arc. Okay, so that's that's the first point. Now what you want to click is the midpoint of the arc. So I'm going to click, it doesn't super matter, but there. And then the last point is, and I'm going to zoom in. You can zoom as you're doing this. Uh, you just go up and down on the center wheel, and you can zoom in and out. The last point would be the end of the arc. Now if you go too far, you, I don't know if you can see that, um, the uh, well, it's kind of hard to see. All right, so let let's stop for a second. Let's say let's just do this real world. Let's say okay, I can't really see what I'm doing. I can barely see it. I'm sure you guys are having trouble too. So I'm just gonna right click to stop and then right click again to get out of the draw function. Or escape will get you out of the draw function. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into image attributes. And how I got there is I'm right clicking in the open CAD space, so not on a pattern or anything like that. Right now there's no patterns. And then you go into image attributes. And then I believe it's up here under one of these. Sorry. It may not be. Um, I'll get back to you on that. So um, right click in the open CAD space and then pick this image attributes. And then I'm going to turn down the opacity of the image so that my drawing tools will show up more. And then I'm going to increase my line thickness. You can also do things like decrease your green filter um, to, to change, um, to make certain colors pop more and, um, and others go away. Okay, now I'm going to go back to what I was showing you in the draw arc. No. 
it help if I actually turn down the image opacity? Sorry about that. Okay. So draw arc. Left clicking the first point. Left clicking the second point, which is the midpoint of the arc. Then notice how the line's so much thicker and it's so much easier to see now. Now if I go too far, I'm going to get gaps and stuff like that. So you, you want to kind of visualize, and it's pretty easy to do, to tell where the arc ends. Okay. And now to move it while I'm in the middle of drawing, what I did is I, right, I held down the scroll wheel with my... Uh, with my index finger and I move the mouse. So I'm holding down the scroll wheel and see how the mouse, the little cursor turns to a hand when I do that. So I can kind of move things around. So I can zoom in and out. I do a lot of this kind of instinctively because I've been doing this for a little while. But now, the, you may think, oh, it makes sense to switch over to a line tool right here. Um, but I don't do that. I, I and a lot of pattern designers do everything with arcs and and try to avoid lines in general um, not that they're particularly bad it's just just a lot easier um, just to go through this with one tool so um, so I'm getting ready to click the midpoint you notice I did not click the start point after you do the first line it assumes that the start of the second arc is the end of the first arc. So I'm clicking that. And then I'm clicking at the tip of the leaf. Okay, and same thing. When you're using an arc to draw a line, it's important to not forget that you're not in the line tool because it kind of seems like a line in the beginning until you get that, that uh, second point clicked. So if I went over here and clicked that, it would, it would throw things off. Um, I'm clicking in the middle. And, and moving up just a little bit, there is a little bit of an arc there. And that's another reason why I think people like to use the arc instead of the line, because it seems like a more natural um, uh, shape than a line. So I'm just going to finish going around this pretty quick. Actually, on this, I kind of want these to mirror each other, so I'm going to ignore what the PC is doing. And you can download images and, and trace around those. Take pictures of your customers' quilt tops, go around those. Okay. So I'm going to select all those. And then I'm going to combine them into one pattern. I'm going to right click and hit copy, or you could hit control C on the keyboard. And then I'm going to go to a new quilt group. I'm going to turn the grid on, put it on fairly big, five inch, and right click, paste. I'm going to put this pattern down. And right click to get out of the uh, pasting function. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit F11 with the keyboard. I'm going to draw this around, drag this around. I'm going to pick G for grid snap. And I'm going to grid snap these. And now this is a uh, point to point pattern. 
Okay, the height of this pattern is 9.5 inches. What I want to check is to make sure these bottom pieces are fairly straight. I have a feeling they're not. I can kind of tell just visually that they are not. Um, actually, if I had done this, at the origin point it makes it a little easier. And you'll see why here in a minute. So I'm going to change the grid to 9.5 inches. Okay, and you see how what a benefit that is because now you have a guideline that goes along the lowest point of the quilt. Okay, so, and I can also tell that, let's see, we don't necessarily know that it's not centered, but it may not be, but we're not going to worry about that for now. So I am going to go into the uh, nodes, which is F7. And what I want to do is hover over this pink node right here and pull that down. And we might as well let it in snap. And, and then I'm going to turn off snap for drawing this up, dragging this other one. So I'm hovering over that and I'm going to zoom in while I'm doing it. Right here is an, a place where line thickness is getting in my way. Um, I can't hardly tell when I'm on it. So I'm going to right click out in open space. Now notice when I right clicked on the pattern, I don't get image attributes. When I right click on open space, I get image attributes. So I'm going to turn my line thickness down all the way and exit out. And I wasn't doing too bad. Um, you can fiddle with these things forever and it better or you can just kind of be like eh, that's good enough um, some amount of variation is good because it does make it seem more like it's a naturally quilted uh, ob object or, or kind of hand quilted I guess you should say maybe I'm gonna use a little bit maybe something like that okay and let's check it to see if it's the middle of it is centered. So F11, uh, grid snap. And it's reasonably close. Um, for what I'm doing, I don't really think it'll matter, but I'll go ahead and fix it real quick. I snapped it to that point. I'm just going to relax those a little bit. And there we go. We have a pretty symmetrical pattern that we could do a lot of things with. So the first thing I'm going to do with it is I am going to save it. Well, before you save it, you should always run F2. And let's be up a little. And it ran through pretty quick. And also, you ought to have it be about the size that you are going to want to quilt it on. It's just a generally good idea. So I'll reduce that down to, I don't know, 18 seems big. Reduce it down to 6. Oops. So right there, I didn't have at freeze aspect lock turned on. Okay, so now it's six, about 6 by 11. That sounds pretty good. And now I am right-clicking the pattern, picking Save. I want to save it to my database. And I want to save it to my project. I could even create a GQP that I could send someone else of this if I wanted. Um, I can encrypt it to where it only works on my Stitcher. I can encrypt it to where it only works to me. 
There's no parents found because this was an original creation. Um, so I'm just going to call this uh, Lee, Leafy Duo. Alright, so now you could click that, you can hit draw a pattern, you can put your grid snap on, and that's what it would be like as an edge to edge or as a repeat pattern. Um, and it will so continuously. You can take this pattern or any pattern that's a point to point and set up your grid um, and then snap it around like this highlight that and save it as leafy leafy block oh and i should have shown you another one it's a good idea to set your uh, pattern type is a block. Maybe it's a good idea to put in a um, a tag or two, and we'll save that. Um, this one I can go in. I can change the properties on that one to be point to point. It could be an edge to edge. So I'll save that. It makes it a little easier to find things. Um, sometime I'll talk more about tags and types and stuff like that. So let's see, what else could we do with this? We could, we could throw it on the screen, just drag it on there real quick. Um, I'm gonna, I'm right clicking, picking circular array. And mm, let's see what happens as we increase. That's kind of interesting. So maybe you could stop and you could save that. That's kind of interesting too. Some of these aren't too bad. Okay, so there's, that could be another pattern that you've made. Um, you could um, turn it into a corner pattern. Um, so there's, there's quite a bit you could do there. The, so I've, I've shown you the draw pattern, uh, the draw arc. Draw line is, is basically the same thing as a draw arc. It's, um, you just have a, a, you click the first, on the first line that you draw, I'm going to turn off snap. On the first line that you draw, you just click and then you cl click for the endpoint and then all you have to do is click the endpoint. And 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 and. Okay, so you can do a lot of the same stuff as you can with draw art. So draw freehand is kind of wiggly. <laughs> uh, works a little better when you do it from the head. But if you wanted, you could you could trace around something, uh, maybe a little easier with draw freehand, and then go in and smooth out the nodes. Um, personally, I just prefer to use draw. Draw text. Um, click a point we want to draw at, and then you can. Hello. Um, so that's the cursive font. You can also use the block font. And I had this set this way on purpose because 
you can get patterns from fonts. So this is the winding font. So if I needed a ship, I've got several ship themed items here. I have a, kind of a compass, I have a sh uh, boat. Um, if I need a present that I want to sew, and these will sew. Um, here, I'll throw them on another quilt group real quick. So you can use these as pieces. Um, a lot of times they have several jump stitches. The blue marks mark where the jump stitches are. But I've seen some amazing font patterns out there. I, and, I, and I've sewn them also. I, I saw one that just one letter was an entire trick-or-treat scene and people on the porch and kids running and playing. And, um, you know, it had... A thousand jump stitches but it would be a pretty amazing thing to sew out and you can go in and fix some of these jump stitches if you want with the tools we have available to us okay um anybody have any questions.